Thermal energy storage TES is achieved with widely differing technologies. Depending on the specific technology, it allows excess thermal energy to be stored in used hours, days, or months later, at scales ranging from individual process, building, multi-user building, district, town, or region. Usage examples are the balancing of energy demand between daytime and nighttime, storing summer heat for winter heating, or winter cold for summer air conditioning, seasonal thermal energy storage. Storage media include water or ice slush tanks, masses of native earth or bedrock accessed with heat exchangers by means of boreholes, deep aquifers contained between impermeable strata, shallow, lined pits filled with gravel and water and insulated at the top, as well as eutectic solutions and phase change materials. Other sources of thermal energy for storage include heat or cold produced with heat pumps from off peak, lower cost electric power a practice called peak shaving, heat from combined heat and power CHP power plants, heat produced by renewable electrical energy that exceeds grid demand and waste heat from industrial processes. Heat storage, both seasonal and short-term, is considered an important means for cheaply balancing high shares of variable renewable electricity production and integration of electricity and heating sectors in energy systems almost or completely fed by renewable energy. <laughs> Solar energy storage Most practical active solar heating systems provide storage from a few hours to a day's worth of energy collected. However, there are a growing number of facilities that use seasonal thermal energy storage STES, enabling solar energy to be stored in summer for space heating use during winter. The Drake Landing Solar Community in Alberta, Canada, has now achieved a year-round 97% solar heating fraction, a world record made possible only by incorporating STES. The use of both latent heat and sensible heat are also possible with high-temperature solar thermal input. Various eutectic mixtures of metals, such as aluminium and silicon aluminium silicide, offer a high melting point suited to efficient steam generation, while high alumina cement-based materials offer good thermal storage capabilities. <laughs> Molten salt technology Sensible heat of molten salt is also used for storing solar energy at a high temperature. Molten salts can be employed as a thermal energy storage method to retain thermal energy. Presently, this is a commercially used technology to store the heat collected by concentrated solar power e.g., from a solar tower or solar trough. The heat can later be converted into superheated steam to power conventional steam turbines and generate electricity in bad weather or at night. It was demonstrated in the Solar 2 project from 1995 to 1999. Estimates in 2006 predicted an annual efficiency of 99%, a reference to the energy retained by storing heat before turning it into electricity, versus converting heat directly into electricity. Various eutectic mixtures of different salts are used, e.g., sodium nitrate, potassium nitrate and calcium nitrate. Experience with such systems exists in non-solar applications in the chemical and metals industries as a heat transport fluid. The salt melts at 131 degrees Celsius 268 degrees Fahrenheit. It is kept liquid at 288 degrees Celsius 550 degrees Fahrenheit in an insulated, cold, storage tank. The liquid salt is pumped through panels in a solar collector where the focused sun heats it to 566 degrees Celsius 1051 degrees Fahrenheit. It is then sent to a hot storage tank. With proper insulation of the tank the thermal energy can be usefully stored for up to a week. 
When electricity is needed, the hot molten salt is pumped to a conventional steam generator to produce superheated steam for driving a conventional turbine. Generator set is used in any coal or oil or nuclear power plant. A 100 megawatt turbine would need a tank of about 9.1 meters 30 feet tall and 24 meters 79 feet in diameter to drive it for four hours by this design. Single tank with divider plate to hold both cold and hot molten salt, is under development. It is more economical by achieving 100% more heat storage per unit volume over the dual tank system as the molten salt storage tank is costly due to its complicated construction. Phase change material PCMs are also used in molten salt energy storage. Several parabolic trough power plants in Spain and solar power tower developer SolarReserve use this thermal energy storage concept. The Solana Generating Station in the U.S. can store six hours worth of generating capacity in molten salt. During the summer of 2013 the Gemisolar Thermosolar Solar Power Tower, molten salt plant in Spain achieved a first by continuously producing electricity 24 hours per day for 36 days. Topic. Heat storage in tanks or rock caverns A steam accumulator consists of an insulated steel pressure tank containing hot water and steam under pressure. As a heat storage device, it is used to mediate heat production by a variable or steady source from a variable demand for heat. Steam accumulators may take on a significance for energy storage in solar thermal energy projects. Large stores are widely used in Scandinavia to store heat for several days, to decouple heat and power production and to help meet peak demands. Interseasonal storage in caverns has been investigated and appears to be economical and plays a significant role in heating in Finland. Helen Oy estimates a 11.6 gigawatt hours capacity and 120 megawatts thermal output for its 260,000 cubic meters water cistern under Mustikama, fully charged or discharged in four days at capacity, operating from 2021 to offset days of peak production demand. While the 300,000 cubic meters rock caverns 50 meters under sea level in Kruinuvuornranta near Lajasalo were designated in 2018 to store heat in summer from warm sea water and release it in winter for district heating. Topic: <laughs> Heat storage in hot rocks, concrete, pebbles, etc. Water has one of the highest thermal capacities heat capacity 4.2 J, cm 3 K, whereas concrete has about one-third of that. On the other hand, concrete can be heated to much higher temperatures 1200 degrees Celsius by e.g. electrical heating and therefore has a much higher overall volumetric capacity. Thus in the example below, an insulated cube of about 2.8 meters would appear to provide sufficient storage for a single house to meet 50% of heating demand. This could, in principle, be used to store surplus wind or PV heat due to the ability of electrical heating to reach high temperatures. At the neighborhood level, the Wigenhausen Sud Solar Development at Friedrichshafen has received international attention. This features a 12,000 cubic meters 420,000 cubic feet reinforced concrete thermal store linked to 4,300 square meters 46,000 square feet of solar collectors, which will supply the 570 houses with around 50% of their heating and hot water. Siemens builds a 36 megawatt hours thermal storage near Hamburg with 600 degrees Celsius basalt and 1.5 megawatts electric output. A similar system is scheduled for Saro, Denmark, with 41 to 58 percent of the stored 18 megawatt hours heat returned for the town's district heating, and 30 to 41 percent returned as electricity. Topic. 
Miscibility Gap Alloy MGA technology Miscibility gap alloys rely on the phase change of a metallic material see, latent heat to store thermal energy, rather than pumping the liquid metal between tanks as in a molten salt system, the metal is encapsulated in another metallic material that it cannot alloy with immiscible. Depending on the two materials selected the phase changing material and the encapsulating material storage densities can be between 0.2 and 2 MJ per liter. A working fluid, typically water or steam, is used to transfer the heat into and out of the MGA. Thermal conductivity of MGAs is often higher up to 400 with MK than competing technologies which means quicker charge and discharge of the thermal storage is possible. The technology has not yet been implemented on a large scale. Topic. Electric thermal storage heaters Storage heaters are commonplace in European homes with time-of-use metering traditionally using cheaper electricity at night time. They consist of high-density ceramic bricks or phyllite blocks heated to a high temperature with electricity, and may or may not have good insulation and controls to release heat over a number of hours. Ice-based technology Several applications are being developed where ice is produced during off-peak periods and used for cooling at later time. For example, air conditioning can be provided more economically by using low-cost electricity at night to freeze water into ice, then using the cooling capacity of ice in the afternoon to reduce the electricity needed to handle air conditioning demands. Thermal energy storage using ice makes use of the large heat of fusion of water. Historically, ice was transported from mountains to cities for use as a coolant. One metric ton of water equals one cubic meter can store 334 million joules MJ or 317,000 BTUs 93 kilowatt hours. A relatively small storage facility can hold enough ice to cool a large building for a day or a week. In addition to using ice in direct cooling applications, it is also being used in heat pump-based heating systems. In these applications the phase change energy provides a very significant layer of thermal capacity that is near the bottom range of temperature that water source heat pumps can operate in. This allows the system to ride out the heaviest heating load conditions and extends the time frame by which the source energy elements can contribute heat back into the system. Topic. Cryogenic energy storage This uses liquefaction of air or nitrogen as an energy store. A pilot cryogenic energy system that uses liquid air as the energy store, and low-grade waste heat to drive the thermal re-expansion of the air, has been operating at a power station in SLU, UK since 2010. Topic. Hot silicon technology Solid or molten silicon offers much higher storage temperatures than salts with consequent greater capacity and efficiency. It is being researched as a possible more energy efficient storage technology. Silicon is able to store more than 1 megawatt hour of energy per cubic meter at 1400 degrees Celsius. Molten silicon thermal energy storage is being developed by Australian company 1414 degrees as a more energy efficient storage technology with a combined heat and power CHP output. Topic Pumped heat electricity storage 
In pumped heat electricity storage PHES, a reversible heat pump system is used to store energy as a temperature difference between two heat stores. Isentropic One system which was being developed by the now bankrupt UK company Isentropic operates as follows. It comprises two insulated containers filled with crushed rock or gravel, a hot vessel storing thermal energy at high temperature and high pressure, and a cold vessel storing thermal energy at low temperature and low pressure. The vessels are connected at top and bottom by pipes and the whole system is filled with the inert gas argon. During the charging cycle the system uses off-peak electricity to work as a heat pump. Argon at ambient temperature and pressure from the top of the cold store is compressed adiabatically to a pressure of 12 bars, heating it to around 500 degrees Celsius 900 degrees Fahrenheit. The compressed gas is transferred to the top of the hot vessel where it percolates down through the gravel, transferring its heat to the rock and cooling to ambient temperature. The cooled, but still pressurized, gas emerging at the bottom of the vessel is then expanded again adiabatically back down to one bar, which lowers its temperature to minus 150 degrees Celsius. The cold gas is then passed up through the cold vessel where it cools the rock while being warmed back to its initial condition. The energy is recovered as electricity by reversing the cycle. The hot gas from the hot vessel is expanded to drive a generator and then supplied to the cold store. The cooled gas retrieved from the bottom of the cold store is compressed which heats the gas to ambient temperature. The gas is then transferred to the bottom of the hot vessel to be reheated. The compression and expansion processes are provided by a specially designed reciprocating machine using sliding valves. Surplus heat generated by inefficiencies in the process is shed to the environment through heat exchangers during the discharging cycle. The developer claims that a round trip efficiency of 72 to 80 percent is achievable. This compares to greater than 80% achievable with pumped hydro energy storage. Another proposed system uses turbo machinery and is capable of operating at much higher power levels. Use of phase change material PCMs as heat storage material would enhance the performance further. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Endothermic exothermic chemical reactions. Salt hydrate technology One example of an experimental storage system based on chemical reaction energy is the salt hydrate technology. The system uses the reaction energy created when salts are hydrated or dehydrated. It works by storing heat in a container containing 50% sodium hydroxide NaOH solution. Heat e from using a solar collector, is stored by evaporating the water in an endothermic reaction. When water is added again, heat is released in an exothermic reaction at 50 degrees Celsius 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Current systems operate at 60% efficiency. The system is especially advantageous for seasonal thermal energy storage, because the dried salt can be stored at room temperature for prolonged times, without energy loss. The containers with the dehydrated salt can even be transported to a different location. The system has a higher energy density than heat stored in water and the capacity of the system can be designed to store energy from a few months to years. In 2013, the Dutch technology developer TNO presented the results of the Merits project to store heat in a salt container. The heat, which can be derived from a solar collector on a rooftop, expels the water contained in the salt. When the water is added again, the heat is released, with almost no energy losses. A container with a few cubic meters of salt could store enough of this thermochemical energy to heat a house throughout the winter. 
In a temperate climate like that of the Netherlands, an average low-energy household requires about 6.7 GJ, winter. To store this energy in water at a temperature difference of 70 degrees Celsius, 23 cubic meters insulated water storage would be needed, exceeding the storage abilities of most households. Using salt hydrate technology with a storage density of about 1 GJ per cubic meter, 4 to 8 cubic meters could be sufficient. As of 2016, researchers in several countries are conducting experiments to determine the best type of salt, or salt mixture. Low pressure within the container seems favorable for the energy transport. Especially promising are organic salts, so called ionic liquids. Compared to lithium halide-based sorbents they are less problematic in terms of limited global resources, and compared to most other halides and sodium hydroxide NaOH, they are less corrosive and not negatively affected by CO2 contaminations. Molecular <inaudible> <inaudible> bonds <inaudible> 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 Storing energy in molecular bonds is being investigated. Energy densities equivalent to lithium-ion batteries have been achieved. <laughs> See also